With all the information floating out there on the internet about how to correct your studies, how to discharge debt, and possibly how to become sovereign, there is so much mix-ups of information that it is hard and it can be hard to put all of it together. So I'm here to help you guys make sense of this process. So stay tuned to this video. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share, help somebody with this video because I'm going to break down the difference between public and private and make all of this make sense for you. What's the difference between public and private? Breaking down the differences in commerce. Every natural man and woman is born in the private, whereas the state is public and therefore its public servants and its legal fiction creations are in the public, including its artificial legal persons. The hospital is a corporation, which means they are private, and its sole purpose is to properly process cargo, aka you, into the system to create another trust that will be stolen from. The truth is, a man or woman can either live in the private or act in the public because you're an actor. However, we are trained from an early age to accept a higher authority as normal. Most people exist in a culture of submission and conformity, allowing numerous aspects of their lives to be controlled by the government. The populace is manipulated to become dependent on debt money and conditioned to become fearful of racism, terrorism, wars pandemics etc the manner and appearance of authority is usually intimidating by design while the language of legal fiction commerce which is legalese is deceptive and that is all purposely done because it's a part of their system to keep you low to keep you at the bottom to keep you a worker so that they can continue to feed off of your energy more hard truth knowing what the words actually mean you are indoctrinated to act in a role of an artificial person which is a creation of the state and a debtor serving as surety for the corporate debt of your nation, Inc., which is the Sestake V Trust that they have created in your name in all caps, first, middle, and last, if you have a middle name, at the time of your birth at the hospital when your parents signed the affidavit to obtain a birth certificate. Every nation with a central bank under the Bank for International Settlements has been indebted by the incorporation of its government into the debt money system, which is a fiat currency that we currently call money, which is nothing more than a promissory note, a negotiable instrument, thereby surrendering its power of sovereign money issuance. The setup, a system built on lies. A global system of debt bondage has been established by incorporating governments. Whenever you see the word incorporating, it is talking about business. That is a word that they use for business and commerce. And by programming the people to act in the fictional roles of artificial persons, which as legal fictions having no innate productive capacity are debtors by default, serving as transmitting utilities for human energy. Literally, they are feeding off of your energy. Your labor that you put in is feeding off of your energy. Like they like to say they like to count your income, but an income is something that is extra. Nothing that you make is extra. Everything that you make at your work is what you agreed upon. They're not paying you nothing more or less unless you allow it that you did not agree upon. Let's keep going. An artificial legal person is a dead entity. It is a legal fiction persona in the theater of commerce. And it is under the Foreign Admiralty Maritime Jurisdiction, the International Law of the Sea. On the contrary, you are born into your own sovereign estate of body, mind, and soul. As a sentient man or woman, you live within the sovereign common law jurisdiction, the national law of the land, which is God's law. No one is above God's law, which is universal law. What is the problem? The common law follows natural law, a living system of right or justice held to be common to all humans and derived from nature rather than from the rules of society. In natural law, all people are born equal and endowed with unalienable rights. Your sovereign jurisdiction, including your inborn unalienable rights, cannot be taken from you without your fully informed and willing consent. Legal persons 
actors for incorporated governments, banks, and all corporate entities need to contract with other legal persons, actors, to extract their commercial energy. These legal actors make the presumption that you are also acting in the role of the legal person in legal fiction commerce, which is why they are seeking a contract performance. They always want the the name and often the creation date of the legal person to establish joinder, forming an adhesion contract. They need a person because there is absolutely no way they can contract directly with a living man or woman. It's against universal law. They need a man or woman to consent to take responsibility in the matter of the person unknowingly or knowingly, which is joinder. More detail. In this way, a man or woman becomes party to the action involving the person, which is joinder of the parties into a single case in legal fiction commerce. While a living name is mirrored by the registration of an artificial legal person on the birth certificate, an estate trust is formed, such as Mr. John Doe Trust in all caps. Any living man or woman unknowingly in joinder to such a legal fiction name in all caps blindly takes responsibility for the alleged debts of the trust as its trustee whereas an aware living man or woman can separate themselves from the legal fiction name in all caps and become the rightful controlling agent beneficiary executor executrix for mr john doe trust in all caps so you will own it own nothing excuse me you will own nothing but control everything like rockefeller said and this is literally the man who created the school system this is literally the family that has created the blueprint for generational wealth so things that they say out their mouth you got to start paying attention to because it has some truth to it so what happens after all of this takes place, right? That's the question that mainly a lot of people have. So legal actors, which are like police and public servants, like um, especially police, will attempt to engage the person, which is the business, the corporation, the ends legis, by posting letters, by phone, or on the highway. And these are bill collectors as well, to make and enforce a contract misrepresenting a living man or woman as a fictional person which is the ends legis the business the corporation the corpse causing unwitting joinder which is joining into a contract knowingly or unknowingly which means that your living self is now taking the responsibility of the corporation is the crime of personage and it is perpetuated by baratry the crime of bringing false claims in court. The term bar tree appropriate, appropriately comes from the bar association. Under the common law jurisdiction, which is law of the land, both parties must enter into every contract knowingly, voluntarily, and intentionally, or the contract is unenforceable and void. However, this happens to so many people every day where they unknowingly, involuntarily and unintentionally join into these contracts without understanding what they're getting themselves into so what can i do about this what do we do to remedy this how can we get out of you know being under their jurisdiction and being in joinder in these contracts that we didn't know that we were getting ourselves into what is my next step now, sadly, there is so much misleading information out there on the Internet about what the next steps are. There is so much confusion, but I am here to stop that and to help you guys to really understand what this is about. So come on and listen to this information. Make sure you're taking um, notes because this information is real and I'm giving you this stuff 100 percent free. So let's get into it. However, under the Admiralty Maritime Jurisdiction Law of the Sea, consent to contract is often pursued by silent acquiescence unless the party contracted thereby rebuts the presumption of consent. So basically, if you don't say anything, then that debt belongs to you. If you don't say anything, then that ticket belongs to you. If you don't enforce your rights, then you must pay for this ticket, right? There are ways that you can get out of this stuff. They're just waiting to see if you're going to enforce your rights. And sadly, the majority of the people of today, they don't know or even have a clue that rights are a thing for them. They don't know that they can write a letter and get out of paying a traffic ticket, right? By enforcing their rights. They don't know that. If you do not wish to consent to their contract offer, which is their presentment, you must rebut the presumption that you are acting in the role of a fictional legal persons. 
And that is one of the main things that I do when I do get a traffic subpoena, citation, whatever. I write a letter letting them know that one, you don't even have the right to be asking me to pay for something with debt money because debt money holds no value. Two, the letter that you wrote me is written in the incorrect parse syntax grammar, which automatically cancels out everything that you're saying in there because none of it makes sense. It's on a second grade reading level and it's totally incorrect. And three, my rights as a sovereign do not include me being policed on the road. Now, let's take a look at this maxim of the law. Quid fas non veritas est, which is derived from Latin, and that Latin term translates to legality is not reality. They are literally telling you that just because it's legal does not mean it's realistic. So keep that in mind. So what now? What steps should I take now? Everybody want to keep talking about this, but what am I supposed to do? The first step is to separate yourself from the legal fiction. If you answer to the artificial legal person name in all caps, you contract by joinder to become a liable debtor. However, if you stand truthfully as a man or woman, not acting as an artificial legal person, the two are separated because one is public and one is private. Because of years of conditioning, it takes time to separate the legal fiction from reality in your mind and in the real world because it's a paper trail. It's a process and a powerful and lawful approach is simply to verify everything. And that's what I teach in my academy and on my Patreon, how to take those steps to enforce your self and your rights and to become the sovereign that you already are so that you can both operate privately and publicly because you're only acting as a public person. The truth is, you are never obligated to answer questions or to provide government issue ID. When you, If you ever get pulled over by a police public servant, you can plead the Fifth Amendment and keep your mouth closed. Remain silent. Use and enforce that right. Because anything that, th that you say can and will be used against you. And they literally do that. And now they have those body cams, so they're definitely doing it. But... You're not obligated to answer their questions. However, in some states, specifically Texas, they just uh, passed like over 700 laws in September of 2023. And those one of those laws was that you had to produce or provide government ID when stopped. So this is why you got to get on yourself so that you can be outside of their jurisdiction. Truly to uphold your government's of the people it is not your duty to answer questions it is your duty to ask questions you have the right to know who is making a claim against you you have the right to know who the injured party is you have the right to conditionally accept any claim against you upon verification and the right to reserve your rights without prejudice and therefore the right to remain silent to avoid self-incrimination as i said earlier by failing to exercise their rights, the people have been betrayed and have allowed their governance to be turned against them so that the people have been monetized. The original offices of de jure unincorporated government institutions have been usurped and are mostly unoccupied by de jure public servants working for the people in a de jure public capacity. The public state has been captured by financial piracy and has been a commercial enterprise operating by contract under the Admiralty Maritime Jurisdiction Law Merchant and the International Law of the Sea. Once you correct your status and have your passport and you're on the do not detain list and you pretty much have immunity because you're sovereign and sovereign people cannot be sued because they're operating on the private capacity and private matters cannot be handled on a public capacity and you get pulled over by a public servant. Just give them your passport and stuff. Don't say anything. Give it to them. Because when they put you in their system, they're going to see when it comes back that you're outside of their jurisdiction. And they're going to let you go. A lot of people get in trouble because they talk too much and they incriminate themselves. Keep that in mind. That's a pro tip. Now, this is the fun part because I really love breaking down the difference between public and private. So let's get into it. Public versus private. The following definitions apply to the de facto incorporated state in which the agencies of government are all artificial legal persons and are merely corporate franchises. Literally. OK, so let's talk about in the public. In the public, you have the public government, which was created by the state 
to be public servants, acting in public capacity as members of the public as legal fictions. So they are all something that has been created in legality. Now, the private is reality. Let's go to the private side. In the private, you have the private man or woman, which is the sovereign uh, sentient being that was created by nature or God. That is a private sovereign living in private capacity because we are the people and we are lawful facts, which is reality. So you have the blue side representing legality and the yellow side representing reality. Now, let's go over each one separately. So what is private? Private is to be in the private, is to live in a private capacity as a man or woman with flesh and blood, arms and legs, and a conscious mind, and spirit, and life. All men and women are created as equal sovereigns, endowed with unalienable rights and properties, including credit, equating to their valuable human energy. As natural men and women, they are creditors because they are born naturally with an innate productive capacities we have the ability to create okay their right to contract is unlimited and they have unlimited liability being responsible adults they are outside and above the state from letting uh set apart uh, privatus privatus that's the word it means set apart belonging to oneself not to the state that is what private means private matters cannot be handled in a public capacity so learning how to separate yourself you will be able to enforce your privacy you have the right to privacy you have the right to opting out see this is the stuff they don't tell you about that's why every corporation and every website has a privacy clause now let's jump into what is public. Public is to be in the public, is to act in a public capacity as an accommodation party and joined her to an artificial person created and governed by the state. All men and women who act in legal fiction roles for the state are granted revocable privileges and benefits prescribed in legislative acts. As artificial persons, they are debtors because they are created legally without innate productive capacities, meaning they're just there to be siphoned from energy, money, labor. Just take it. They're just a corporation. They don't have the ability to create their right to contract is limited and they have limited liability like a LLC. <laughs> we'll talk about that later. Being legally incompetent creatures of the state. It's legal children, meaning that you don't have the capacity or the ability to handle your own affairs or even to take care of yourself. This is why they can come and take your children from you. They are inside and under the state from letting publicus of the people of the state done for the state, meaning that you have someone handling your affairs, doing things for you, even though you're acting as the trustee, which is supposed to be only doing things for the beneficiary to better the beneficiary or to make uh, to, to, to benefit the beneficiary as the name beneficiary benefit, you know. You're acting in a role you don't understand and therefore you're taking the fiduciary duty off of the United States Treasury and then putting it on yourself. And this is why you owe debt. This is why you have to pay bills. This is why your remittance coupons are not working because you don't understand that you're still public. And as long as you're a public 14th Amendment citizen, you are not able to. In any capacity, I don't care what no one tells you on the Internet, you're not able in any capacity to discharge any or set off any type of debt because you are the debtor and that debt belongs to you because you're acting as the corporation, the person. Let's take a look at where you stand. Now, let's look at how the corporation is over nothing, right? The corporation is a dead thing, right? It doesn't it doesn't exist. It is a legality and not a reality. So is the government. Government is over the corporation, right? And that is also a legality. It doesn't exist. It's a fictional thing, right? It's a fictional entity. And then you have man and woman. And man and woman is over the government because man and woman is a reality. Man and woman is a actual fact and not a fiction. Man and woman is sovereign. And then you have nature or God. And nature and God is over man and woman because that is also a fact. It is a reality. Just like man and woman is a reality. It is over fiction. The individual, a natural man or woman, may stand upon his constitutional rights as a citizen. He is entitled to carry on his private business in his own way. His power to contract is unlimited.
He owes no duty to the state or to his neighbors to divulge his business or to open his doors to an investigation so far as it may tend to incriminate him. He owes no such duty to the state since he receives nothing therefrom beyond the protection of his life and property. His rights are such as existed by the law of the land long antecedent to the organization of the state and can only be taken from him by due process of law and in, in accordance with the constitution among his rights are a refusal to incriminate himself which is the fifth amendment and the immunity of himself and his property from arrest or seizure except under a warrant of the law he owes nothing to the public so long as he does not trespass upon their rights upon the other hand the corporation is a creature of the state it is presumed to be incorporated for the benefit of the public it receives certain special privileges and franchises and holds them subject to the law of the state and the limitations of its charter. Its powers are limited by law. It can make no contract not authorized by its charter. Its rights to act as a corporation are only preserved to it so long as it obeys the laws of its creation. There is a reversed right in the legis legislature to investigate its contracts and find out whether it has exceeded its powers. It will be a strange anomaly to hold that a state having chartered a corporation to make use of franchise, I mean, certain franchises could not, in the exercise of its sovereignty, inquire how these franchises had been employed and whether they have been abused and demand the production of the corporate excuse me, books and papers for that purpose. And this is a citation emphasized emphasis was added by Hale vs. Henkel, 201 U.S. 43, 1906. Go look that up. Enforce your sovereignty. A sovereign man or woman lives in their own private capacity, possessing unalienable rights and properties. They may volunteer to act in a public capacity, granted rev revocable privileges and benefits, which are the mere civil rights of an artificial legal person. This is why, to be honest, I need the people that call themselves black and African-American to go pick up a Black's Law Dictionary and go look up the word black. This is the reason why they want you to classify yourself as black, because when you are a black entity or a black ends legis corpse corporation business, that means that you have no rights. Even though, you know, they have rights written, they have the capacity to revoke certain uh, rights from you based off of what you classify yourself as. This is why they push it so hard. And this is why your race or ethnicity or what they call it is nothing more than a political status. Governments incorporate form artificial legal persons of many kinds by registration, presuming a franchise benefit to the state's legal society. Legal persons include citizen, resident, inhabitant, driver, individual, taxpayer, employee, voter, and owner. They are servants, transmitting utilities, debtors, decedents, or incompetent wards of the state. Incorporation transfers anything from the sovereign nation, national law of land, which is common law jurisdiction, into the foreign international law of the sea, admiralty maritime jurisdiction. Whenever people act in a public capacity as public servants, they are accountable to the state if they fail to perform their role as contracted. Again, why they can come and take your children from you. Whenever people live in their private capacity as private sovereigns, they are accountable in common law if they cause harm to any living soul. And that's pretty much what it's about. It's about if there's an injured party or not. Really, they're not supposed to arrest you unless there is an injured party. Many of the people are sitting in jail or prison because they don't know their rights. They don't know how to enforce their rights. They don't even know they may have rights. And they're sitting in a prison cell as a transmitting utility that they are transmitting utilities from. Literally, they are taking these people's lives from them for money. You know how much it costs to fill a jail cell? That's another video for another day as well. So let's get into this slide. We're going to be talking about enforcing your sovereignty. Again, we're going deeper into it. If you act in the role of a legal person, you are crossing the line into the lower world of the legally dead, surrendering your unalienable rights as a living soul. 
Now, let's take a look into this chart right here. At the top, you see it says real, living, and private across the top. Underneath, you have universal law, which is the laws of God, creator of the universe, the universal law. Nothing trumps that. Keep that in mind. Underneath the universal law, you have natural law, which is the laws of nature, which is how the trees grow, how we grow, you know, things that are natural that can't stop. Common law is the private law, which is cause no harm, loss, or fraud to other living souls. Treat others as you treat treat yourself and then underneath of that you have constitutional law which is all holders of a public oath or office must serve the private people these are supposed to be the people who are the public servants for we the people however um we have been infiltrated we have been severely infiltrated and then you have lawful land law and de jure that's the side that you want to be living on. Underneath of that when you are crossing into the line of the lower world the legally did then you have legal you have, which I said legality is false. And then you have the law of the sea. You have de facto. You have commercial law, which is contract law, law merchant, UCC. Underneath that, you have admiralty maritime, which is military, tribunal, uh, martial law. Underneath of that, you have statutory legislation, which is the public servants, which is the statutory acts, bills, codes, rules, legislative instruments. And then underneath of that, you have corporations, which is the legal persons, which is your ends legis, your name in all caps. The franchises, the dissonance, the uh, debtors, and the wars of state. And then underneath that, you have fiction, dead, and public. Literally, we're rising from the bottom up. We are rebirthing ourselves. We are coming out of that by saying that we are no longer dead at sea. We're no longer dead at sea because we're no longer under admiralty maritime jurisdiction. And we're living and we're competent and we're able to handle our own affairs. We no longer need you to do for us. Now, if you made it this far in the presentation, first, I just want to say thank you because this is a lot of information to take in. And a lot of people will not get this, right? This is not the type of information that you can just go around and share with your family and think they're going to casually be okay with what you're saying. This information has to be processed. And a lot of people are not talking about the back end stuff, which really makes this hard for us to understand, for us to grasp. So my job when I first started this was to figure out what the people on the internet weren't sharing. And because I figured that out and I share my journey with others, I've been able to help so many people to obtain five-star passports um, to get get food stamps to dismiss traffic tickets to get out of child support so much stuff that I've actually been able to help a whole lot of people with because I took the initiative to go and find out the missing parts the parts that nobody was talking about so if you made it this far in this video you're the real MVP and you're about to make a lot of changes in your own life from this you know with this knowledge so again thank you for listening and in conclusion today's presentation aimed to empower each of you with a deeper understanding of the distinctions between the public and private realms and commerce by unraveling the intricacies of these uh, spheres we've embarked on a journey towards reclaiming individual sovereignty as you navigate the dynamic landscapes of commerce remember that knowledge is your greatest asset armed with a clear comprehension of public and private domains, you now possess the tools to enforce your sovereignty and make informed decisions. This newfound awareness empowers you to navigate the complexities of commerce with confidence, ensuring that you retain control over your affairs. As you embark on this journey, may your path be illuminated by the light of understanding, and may you forge ahead with the strength that comes from embracing your sovereign rights. Thank you for your time and commitment to expanding your knowledge and pursuing of greater autonomy in the realm of commerce and if you're interested if you like my teaching and you would like to join my private community please subscribe to my patreon for more i have every step of the way from beginning to end posted there for you to do independently at patreon.com forward, uh, forward slash divine trust babies and if you would like a detailed step-by-step full of support comprehensive ways to do this process then join my academy at divine dash trust dash babies dot trader central site dot com and you can join there and get everything that you need full of support i monitor everything i review everything to make sure that everything is done properly and correctly so that you can be well on your way to success as i stated before i've helped so many people in my private community and I'm just excited to share this information with more people because now I know the information that I've went out to seek 
I know it's true. And now it makes so much sense that I'm helping other people learn this. If you want to learn how to correct your status, um, you can look in my description, click the links in my description. If you want to get a free uh, information packet with a whole lot of different books and information to point you in the right direction to do this independently, that uh, my my email is also in the description. You can send me an email. Just do everything that you can to help yourself, right? I'm here to help you as you help yourself. Um, and other than that, I hope this makes a whole lot of sense for you guys and putting everything together as, as to why your 1099s aren't working, as to why your remittance coupons aren't working, as to why any of the discharge methods that you have been learning on the internet are not working. It's because you have not, um, you have not removed yourself from the jurisdiction of the public uh, corporation. So... Like I said, if you want to learn how to do the status correction, I have a three hour video. Uh, subscribe to this YouTube channel. Go look at that video. Check out my other videos. Like, share, comment and help this page grow for more videos and content like this. Other than that, enjoy the rest of your week. And I hope that is full of abundance and joy.